It was the hottest day of the year so far. Bumblebees busied about in the sunshine, dancing from flower to flower, collecting the pollen which would become the nectar of honey. Wildflowers bloom all around the garden, bordered as it was with a rustic picket fence the mole had constructed. The sun warmed the stone walls of the house and turned the greenhouse into a tropical paradise. Inside the greenhouse, wearing her gardening gloves over tiny paws, the hedgehog was picking fruits and vegetables for dinner. As she plucked each from the plant, she examined them and then gently lay them in a wicker basket lined with a tea towel by her feet. No food tasted quite like homegrown food, she thought to herself with a smile. The sun radiated through the glass of the greenhouse, and the air inside was heavy and humid, as it is in more tropical climes than here, in a small woodland on top of a hill. The leaves were healthy and a vibrant green, the stems which channel water from the rich compost up to the highest branches of the plants were thick and robust, and there, hanging like baubles on a Christmas tree, were an array of delicious foods. Tomatoes, more red than the mole's nose after he'd caught a little too much sun. Peppers, ranging in colour from a rich pine green to a bright and vivid orange. Chilies, something only the mole really dabbled in, as red as a burning flame, a burning flame which would certainly challenge these fruits for heat. There, in the corner, which caught the sun from the start of the day right through to the end, was the hedgehog's favourite plant. It had taken more than several attempts to grow this tiny tree, its waxy leaves a deep and exotic green. It stood only a few feet taller than her, and after a couple of years of growth, this plant was at last ready to bear fruit. It was, of course, the hedgehog's favourite an avocado tree. As she mopped her brow in the heat, she reached for one of the ripe fruits. It came away easily from the branch, as all fruit does when it is willing to be plucked. She tested its ripeness with an almost professional squeeze of the end of the fruit between her thumb and forefinger. It was perfect. She sat herself down on one of the benches, which were home to many pots of young plants, had a sip of her homemade lemonade and reached for her knife. With expert precision, she sliced through the delicate flesh of the avocado and as she reached the stone in its centre, she turned it as she had learned to do long ago. Her work with the knife complete, she placed it next to her on the bench. With the fruit in both paws, she gave it a twist and there it was two halves of the most perfect avocado she had ever seen. Usually, she would slice the flesh of the fruit and place it on a toasted bagel and garnish it with some sesame seeds and a balsamic glaze the mole had prepared for her. This time, however, she reached for a spoon in her lined wicker basket and scooped the edible insides out of the waxy shell. She took the sage-green delicacy in her right paw and tasted it. It was like nothing she had ever tasted before. She knew she loved avocados, but this avocado was something else. It tasted like it had been grown on a sunny hillside in heaven. She took another bite, and the creamy flesh filled her with pleasure. Before long, she had finished the half of the avocado she had scooped out, and was levering the stone out of the other side. More avocado. She couldn't resist it. It was divine and wonderful, and it was the best thing she'd ever eaten. The second half of the first avocado disappeared faster than the first. She was just about to slice through the skin of a second avocado she had plucked from the tree when she looked up. The mole stood in the doorway with a look of half-exasperation, half-knowing humour. The hedgehog quickly held the avocado and the knife behind her back, hoping the mole hadn't seen it. 
even though she was sure he had. What have you been up to? the mole asked, a grin spreading over his tiny features. Oh, just picking some vegetables for dinner, nothing else, the hedgehog said shyly and a little defensively. The mole's eyes moved from the hedgehog to the wicker basket by her feet. It was indeed full of the most delicious-looking produce, and he couldn't wait to start cooking with it. It was on the journey his gaze took as it moved from the hedgehog's eyes to the floor that he spotted the forlorn and empty shell of the eaten avocado. He looked again at the hedgehog, now finding it incredibly difficult to hold in his laughter. He swallowed it back. Only picking food for dinner, he asked. The smile now betraying the laughter which was bubbling up inside him. Oh, yes, what else? the hedgehog said, gesturing to the basket. It was only then that she, too, spotted the incriminating evidence of the avocado skin on the bench next to where she had sat just moments before. She began to giggle, and her giggle shook her so much it became a laugh. It wasn't long before they were both standing there, laughing in the greenhouse. At that moment, the joy in the hearts of these small animals shone brighter than the sun burning in the big blue sky. Hours later, as the sun had begun to set, the mole took a couple of logs from the log store and placed them on a spot of earth he had cleared for this purpose. Astride the logs were two large stone bricks. He lit a fire, and before long the two logs were glowing a deep amber hue. He took a wire rack and lay it across the two stone bricks, fashioning an improvised barbecue with the things he had managed to find in the forest while the hedgehog was picking the vegetables and sampling the produce as she went. He had sliced some peppers and large tomatoes which he had seasoned with olive oil, salt, pepper and a few secret ingredients and placed them in a bowl. He now took them, one by one, and grilled them over the glowing embers of the fire. Half an hour later, he and the hedgehog sat by the warmth of the still-going fire as the birds sang their evening serenade. They ate, talked and laughed, they drank plum wine and talked and laughed some more. Sat as they were on a tree stump, the mole reached his tiny arms around the hedgehog and drew her close to him. His tiny mouth whispered in her tiny ear. Can I tell you something? Go on, the hedgehog replied, expecting a wave of soppiness as was usual and commonplace when the mole had drunk a little wine. Well, the mole whispered, quieter than even before, I know you ate that avocado. The hedgehog sniggered and snorted, wine pouring from her nose and mouth, the mole anticipating reaction, but not quite the scale of the dramatics the hedgehog was now performing, collapsed in a wave of debilitating laughter. The two animals sat, holding on to each other to stay upright, hysterically laughing as they mopped the plum wine from their clothes and faces. It must be love, the mole said for me to still find you pretty with plum wine pouring from your nose. It must be love, the hedgehog replied, for me to share this with you. And as she said the words, she pulled an avocado from the folds of her jacket, produced a knife and spoon and cut the fruit in two with the expert precision of practice. They sat happy and light with laughter, and shared the fruits of their labour. We hope you enjoyed this bedtime story from Your Bedtime Stories. Don't forget to subscribe for new stories uploaded every day.